Well, with this, it is time for me to welcome, uh, and it is a, a ecstatic moment for all of us that we are joined by Mr. Webhav Dange, who is the founding uh, director and member of the Federation of Electronic Sports Association India, which is FEAI, in a conversation with uh, Dr. Anurag Batra, uh, the editor-in-chief of uh, BW Business World and Exchange for Media uh, Group. So this is going to be an exciting conversation. I'm sure a lot of uh, keenness uh, to this conversation is going to be there. Uh, Dr. Batra, over to you to take it forward with Mr. Dang uh, Dange. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Bhavna. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Batra? Mr. Dange, thank you so much. You are really multifaceted and congratulations to you on your latest book. Uh, yes, you. I am very much here, Bhavna. Yeah, I'm very much here and so is Mr. Dange. So let me um, uh, let me dive into a conversation directly with Mr. Uh, Dange. Uh, Mr. Dange, first of all, let me start by asking you, um, you know, as we heard that the gaming is a fastest growing segment within that esports is being set up. So I would like today, why was, while I am aware of uh, that the FEAI is promoting India as a, you know, first esports uh, definition that it is a hybrid definition. So tell us what is the charter of the FEAI and how you are becoming a catalyst to, to really build the right policy framework, engage all the stakeholders and grow the domain. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. B Dr. Batra, for this uh, wonderful opportunity to interact. And as, as we know, whatever Dr. Batra and your team does is, is, is always uh, beyond excellence. So I'm sure that this is conversation and the uh, entire uh, day-long uh, program you have chart out will, is going to be a very interesting and helpful. Uh, as you uh, said in your opening remarks, and I was looking at your, you know, uh, watching your remarks, you are right that overall gaming industry is increasing globally. And of course, India cannot be uh, aloof of that development that's happening globally. Uh, today, we are roughly around 3% in our, in our participation into the gaming in industry, the entire AVGC industry. Uh, fortunately, the government has recognized that this is going to be a to be, to be a huge area. And uh, right from the top, Honorable Prime Minister has been commenting on this time and again from the last couple of years uh, about how India can you know, be benefited, both in terms of participating uh, from, from the player's perspective, developer's perspective, tournament organizers, uh, participating in tournaments. And I, so, so everybody has recognized this. Though we are just 3% in terms of participation today, but I'm sure in next couple of years or few years, this, this number is going to be phenomenally going up, shall be going phenomenally up. So I think uh, uh, it's, it's a right time. We thought that it's a right time that we uh, must do a very considered and a very sustained effort to ensure that India is at the forefront of this development. And not only we play our own part in ensuring that we are part of this development, we also as a nation gets benefited by these uh, uh, changes that is happening, the opportunities that this sector is happening. And with that perspective, Federation of Esports of Association of India was formed. Uh, as you rightly said, we, we are definitely trying to promote a, a, a kind of a hybrid model, which uh, government of India has also been talking about. We, we will like uh, uh, probably Ministry of Youth Affairs and also the Ministry of IT to, to define uh, sports both and differentiate between e-sports, uh, you know, uh, real money gaming or fantasy sports. So I'm not saying they're good or bad, but they have their own role to play. And e-sports, I, I, I will primarily look at e-sports as, as a game which Supreme Court has also said that any skill-based online gaming or, uh, or played on any of the uh, electronic format, whether it is phones, mobile phones, or on a gadget, can be considered as esports. And I think that clarification or that uh, uh, evolving of that right definition is where FEI has been working uh, uh, relentlessly since, since last two years. Because uh, then only uh, we can be really benefited because not only players should participate because India has a huge, uh, you know, we have a youngest population. Today, 85% uh, of India's uh, esports market is on mobile phone. We have more than, you know, 90% of our, uh, you know, uh, 
mobile bank game market is growing by almost 35 40% year on year we have 150 billion population we have more than 80 90 billion smart smartphones so i think with all this put together india is poised to get benefited and if we we miss this opportunity then probably we will miss as a nation as a economy so i think that is the uh, perspective which fea has in in a in a larger terms uh, what are the policy tweaks policy measures that need to happen uh, from the policy makers from the government to be able to give policy yeah so uh, you know uh, the po the policy makers are able to build the right framework what is that right framework what is your expectations as an association and someone who represents the industry from the government from the policy makers uh, yes of course uh, as i said we look at it esports as a, as a larger uh, you know as a very important component of the overall gaming and sports industry in india and uh, as i said we look at it from a, a bit holistic holistic perspective of all the stakeholders player playing their own role for example esports arena players will have a role to play team owners will have a role to play tournament organizers will have a role to play game developers will have to be a, will have a role to play so everybody will have to play a role so i think we look at esports from this perspective and we have prepared a draft policy paper interacting with almost every stakeholder taking everybody on the board and we are about to submit those draft policy documents to the government and we are happy that the finance minister has announced in this year's budget that uh, avgc policy shall be prepared and they have prepared a small group which will look at this policy and we have been suggesting to government uh, to work closely in in developing those policy for example uh, we look at it uh, not only conventional esports should be played but we also look at how can we bring in indian games to this whole area arena today our participation in developing probably indian games is very less but can we look at that indian developers come up with a huge number of indian games and you know uh, look at developing that or for example uh, we are looking at developing a bottom up approach where we are working with the you know district level state level uh, universities colleges to organize those kind of tournaments in fact in last one more than one year we have organized more than 3 4 national tournament with the participation of more than 1 lakh esports owner so you know those aspects also need to be how do entire ecosystem in of esports in india needs to be developed so right from defining the esports right from roles and responsibility right from how do we get benefited in terms of opportunities how do developers play their own role so i think that's one aspect similarly there is another aspect that we need to look at for example fea has suggested to do the ranking of the players and by doing the ranking we are also looking at how do we pro protect data of the players both in terms of their ranking their you know so data protection aspects also needs to be to be look at so similarly for example the new education policy also talks about developing these new uh, new educational and skill programs for this new age uh, economy and new age, new age opportunity so in our policy document we are also talking about what do we need to do from that that front for example we have interacted with the esports association of usa and esports association of uk and we are trying to understand how do they have developed their own skill skill courses skill syllabuses education syllabuses so that also needs to be looked at uh, you will be surprised to know dr batra the typical age group of esports players is between 15 to 18 years of age or 20 years of age so we are also looking at how do we create a ecosystem where post those uh, peak of their uh, in a way sporting career how do we ensure that these players are are still contributing to the esports and their livelihood and everything is taken care of so i think those aspects also need to be added so from the federation we always are looking at ensuring that we have a very complete holistic view of uh, the entire esports arena and try to develop a ecosystem which is win win for for all the stakeholders i think that's our larger expectation from the government and hopefully with this uh, draft which we are submitting and the group government has put in uh, we will be able to 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 effectively uh, uh, suggest government partner with government on developing those ideas in a in a larger uh, interest of the uh, 
nation and therefore we put in lot of ever effort in in ensuring evolving the, those dialogue with all the stakeholders so for example we have n number of sessions with industry developers tournament organizers team owners for example we are also tying up with the government of india on using this khelo india platform to take e sports to the you know at the uh, school college and university level so i think all this put together uh, we look at developing a ecosystem which is which is for indian by indians but is capable of taking india to the global level. okay now when you talking india taking india to the global level if you had to put, put a number of what is the kind of growth you see in the gaming arena and in the esports arena give our viewers a sense of the kind of scale up that is happening the kind of scale up that is possible the kind of numbers we can expect our pitch madison advertising outlook our uh, exchange from media densu digital uh, outlook all have predicted huge growth for the gaming sector and so have all other reports in this sector your own report so give us a sense of what is the numbers we are likely to do over the next few years yes of course as i said dr batra i'll i'll try to share few data which is which is when it itself is very very uh, you know speaking for example today india has a gaming viewership of around 450 million and most of them you know uh, 48% of them are youtube gamers who have said that they they like to watch the uh, you know games than actually playing the games so there is a huge amount of viewership in india similarly for example in 2019 we have around 25 game developers in india today as on day when we speak we have more than 500 500 uh, you know developers in india and this is bound to probably triple by 23 for example game like cricket has catch the frenzy uh, you know uh, i think rajan nevan is going to join you in um, next session he'll explain you in detail the real cr- cricket has has crossed all the boundaries in terms of viewership players participation the national tournament has seen more than 40 million participate uh, you know viewership more than 1 lakh people participating so i think this is bound to grow ground uh, uh, if if i put may put it's it's like catching a wild fire so if we are probably able to uh, uh, to to kind of direct it with the right regulatory framework and a right framework then this this can be used as our advantage at our india's advantage so i think from that perspective i see probably sky is the limit or if i may say i cloud is cloud is the limit in e sports okay my last question yeah <laughs> okay now my last question what are your expectations from the private players while this you know gaming involves young adults and we have a worry they spend too much time on the screen some of the games are violent uh, so how do you make sure you strike the balance so is there so you- are do the private players who are a very important stakeholder in this ecosystem i'm sure they're thinking about such aspects what is what are your expectations from these private players no you are right i think that's the biggest challenge uh, the entire gaming online gaming industry uh, today uh, is is going to face in even facing today and uh, and they are bound to increase in few years for example we have seen recently few states have banned online gaming and you know uh, uh, similar kind of efforts have been made of course sports have now given some respite in that but this is bound to happen there is a lot of negativity in terms of amount of violence and amount of gaming so i think private sector particularly in indian developers will have to come up with lot of uh, solutions in terms of developing lot of indian games which are skill based games so for example conventional traditional games can be brought on the e sports platform that is something which can be developed today india is contributing hugely on the you know uh, it and iot based sectors why can't we uh, you know have lot of developers in india who are coming up with lot of indian games traditional conventional indian games and we will also have to look at private sector will team owners player management companies we as a association will have to look at how do we ensure that we uh, 
we we reduce the negative impact of you know uh, if at all they are through a sustained effort of educating both in terms of uh, the players their guardians parents team owners uh, developers to come up with so so one aspect is how do we come up with a lot of games which are non violent which are more skill based and similarly we also create a ecosystem where we try to educate uh, players and team owners to ensure that there is a right work balance you know uh, approach for example i went to few boot camps uh, esports boot camp and interacted with players and esports uh, teams and they have started developing those mechanisms within their uh, framework for example how much amount of time they should they should spend every day how much amount of tournaments they should play every week or every month how much amount of tournaments a player should play you know all those things need to be evolved in a due course of time and ensure that the ecosystem benefits everybody and does not uh, creates uh, any uh, negative impact on the society because as a developer whether you are a developer or a team owner or a player or a association we will have to play a very responsible and uh, important constructive role in ensuring that our sector esports as a sector and as a ecosystem ensures that the it, it is benefited to the society and a country as a whole thank you uh, all the best mr vaibhav dange in your mission to grow this domain it brings employment it brings uh, gdp it is an important uh, sport hopefully in the future who knows it may become an olympic sport so kudos to you the early years of any sector are very important so the right framework by the right stakeholders is very very important so i would like to congratulate you and all your stakeholders and the members of the association on doing that pioneering work which will lay the foundation for a very robust and a vibrant sector that takes india to the globe so back to you bhavna for the rest of the conversation thank you mr dange for joining us for this hopefully at our next uh, gaming summit we'll be doing this face to face physically in a conference uh, uh, location and we look forward to engaging with you again thank you for your time thank you for your input thank you for the role you're playing back to you bhavna thank you thank you dr batra for taking the initiative and giving this opportunity to interact it's as you rightly said this is a uh, innovation right sector so we all will probably put our mind together and ensure that it's largely benefited to the entire society and a nation as a whole and every stakeholder plays its own role part thank you so much